Uh, uh, Mr. Cash, I'm sorry to interrupt you. I do want to come back to it, but I just need to go to Suffolk Constabulary because they're just going to give us an update on the story of Connor McCaig. Part of the investigation. And while officers have been finding waste from the correct time frame throughout the work, no trace of Corrie has been found. Our thoughts are with Corrie's family, as we had hoped that this search would have provided them with the answers about what happened to him. The search team will have completed work this afternoon, Friday the 21st of July, and will have searched through more than 6,500 tonnes of waste. We've been searching the area where waste was deposited between Monday the 9th of 19th of September, when the new cell 22 was opened for waste deposits, and Monday the 3rd of October, which is when we notified the site after early inquiries had indicated that the bin lorry may be of interest. This has been an unprecedented search in the scale and the amount of waste that has been examined. We have searched the whole area where we believed Corrie could be. We had compelling information that directed us to this area. However, we haven't found Corrie, and this is bitterly disappointing. We have searched over 6,500 tonnes of waste, excavating a huge area. Without anything further to tell us where he might be, on such a vast site, the search cannot continue. We've been finding items such as newspapers and other material that have September 2016 dates on them. This is the time that Corrie went missing. Some items have been clearly identifiable as coming from Bury St Edmunds, and this has confirmed that we've been searching in the right place. However, None of these items has had any link to Corrie. We've also found items such as mobile phones, footwear and clothing. And each one of these items has been checked to ensure that it didn't belong to Corrie. We have completed the search of the area where we know that waste was deposited in this period. In fact, we have searched an area that is larger than was originally designated. This work was initially extended to include areas containing additional waste dated in the correct time frame and then was further extended in response to new information regarding the location of further relevant waste. Sadly, we have not found Corrie or any trace of his clothing or his mobile phone. All the work that we've carried out, particularly around the weight of the bin lorry collection, points to Corrie being taken to the landfill site. The search has been complex, systematic, comprehensive and thorough. Throughout the process, the work being completed has been reviewed by national experts. And the investigation behind the scenes hasn't stood still while the search has been carried out. But all the information that we have still points to the fact that Corrie was transported from the horseshoe area in the bin lorry. Having been through all of the possibilities in detail, there is nothing to support any theory other than that Corrie was in the bin. There are no further sightings of him on CCTV to suggest that he left the area, and we have explored the other possibilities as to how he, as, as to how he might have left, such as being taken from the area by someone, and there is no evidence to support that this is the case. On CCTV, he appears to be alone, and we have traced and spoken to everyone who walked through Brent Grovel Street around the relevant time, and none of them have seen anything suspicious. We know that Corrie's phone travelled away from the Bury St Edmunds area at the same time as the bin lorry that collected waste from Brent Grovel Street. The theory that Corrie was in the bin that was emptied into the bin lorry shortly after he was last seen is strengthened by credible information that we have obtained throughout our inquiries that Corrie had Oh dear, I'm sorry, we appear to have lost that line to uh, Suffolk Constabulary. I think it's come back, let's see if we can go back to it. I would now like to confirm some other details around the search and the investigation to date. Milton Landfill site is, around, is over 48 hectares in size and accepts approximately 96,000 tonnes of waste per year. 
Police contacted the site on Monday the 3rd of October, a week after Corrie was reported as missing. As soon as he had been reported missing, on the afternoon of Monday the 26th of September, police began an extensive search for him, carrying out ground, air and water searches, completing initial background inquiries, while also looking at CCTV for positive sightings to try and trace his movements after he left his friends in Bury St Edmunds. Officers had quickly viewed CCTV to track where he had been and determined that he had been in Brent Grovel Street at around 3.25 a.m. While CCTV was being examined around the area for further sightings, the viewing was also moving forward in time and it was then that it was identified that there had been a bin lorry collection in the area around 4.15 to 4.20 a.m. on Saturday the 24th of September. Further inquiries determined the waste was taken to Milton for landfill disposal. This was the only bin that was collected from the area on Saturday the 24th of September and waste from it was taken first to a transfer station and then on to Milton landfill site. It is known that there were several collections in Bury St Edmunds after the Brent Grovel Street one and the bin lorry went on to other collections in Mildenhall, Newmarket, Soham and Ely. Police were initially advised that the weight of the bin, the bin pickup was 11 kilograms. However, following repeated checking with the company by officers, it was discovered that the bin was much heavier than originally thought, over 100 kilograms. Cell 22 was opened up on Monday the 19th of September at Milton Landfill site and waste from the relevant time period and from ben Bury St Edmunds was deposited here, as well as waste from other parts of the region. However, it has been determined during the course of the search that waste may have been spread and moved across the area as part of standard procedures on the site, and this has informed our search parameters. Cell 22 and its borders are where the police have been searching. The site is a combination of waste I think we have lost that line to Suffolk Constabulary for the moment. We'll try and re-establish that. Let's just update what we've heard from Detective Superintendent Katie Elliott, who's been talking to us. They have searched over 6,500 tonnes of waste, an area of the Milton landfill site, uh, where they think this bin lorry uh, had uh, deposited uh, what it was carrying. Uh, this was uh, an area of the landfill site that they were searching. You're looking at it uh, right here. Um, they know that that bin lorry left the street where Corrie McCaig was last seen at between 4.15 and 4.20 that Saturday morning. The CCTV footage that we've seen of him shows him disappearing around a corner and he isn't seen again. And so the working theory uh, the detective superintendent is telling us is that he got into a bin uh, and that bin may have then been, of course, picked up by the bin lorry. Um, the clues that they've been working off include his mobile phone, uh, which seems to follow the pattern of the bin lorry. It went via a transfer station and then to the landfill site. But this is a huge area, um, the landfill area. It's about 48 hectares. Uh, they receive around 96,000 tonnes of refuse a year, uh, which tells you the enormity of uh, the task they've had. But they've searched above and beyond uh, the area where they think uh, the refuse was deposited, but they've seen no sign of him. They found no trace of Corey McKay, nor any trace of his mobile phone, but they know from receipts uh, in that refuse that they searched and from other clues that they, they were searching in the right area. What we don't know, and it's rather disappointing we've lost the line, is what this means for the search and for the police inquiry. Um, we do have a correspondent there and we will try and bring you the latest on that as and when we got it. These are actually live pictures of uh, the landfill site in Milton that you're looking at and you can see that the police uh, search has, has been completed and the police do seem well satisfied that they've done all they possibly can 
for the moment uh, to find Corrie McKay. It is a huge area, as you can see. We will bring you some more news from that press conference as and when we get our correspondent. Michael Gove was making his first speech since returning to the Cabinet uh, today. He also told environmental and countryside groups that Brexit offered a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to reform Britain's agriculture and fisheries. He announced farming subs 